I'll explain what does it mean to augment cognition. I will tell you that in the 21st century, one of the most challenging thing uh, in terms of brain research will be to not only heal the brain, but also improve the brain in order to enable it to to face the, the, the upcoming challenges, which are going to be amazing. So this machine will have to learn constantly and adapt constantly to the ever-changing environment that it itself generates. Not to speak about diseases that will be coming, so we'll mention that. So I want to explain to you that in seven minutes, then I'll call Professor Shimon Ullman, and each speaker, if they will behave nicely, they will give exactly 15 minutes talk and you will have 15, five minutes after each speaker to ask questions. So that's the plan. Do prepare questions, because the whole notion here is really to interact with you, rather than to have a monologue and go home. The interaction is very important. So please really ask questions. You have a one of a lifetime a, a chance to speak directly with the, speaker, with the speaker. So please do it. Uh, <clears throat> and if there will be time left at the end, we'll have discussion together, but I doubt it. So let's start. So, in the last 200 million years, there is this phenomena of the mammalian. We are part of the mammalian world, and this mammalian world is about 200 million years old, and during these 200 million years old, we generated, we as human beings, as homo sapiens, we generated an unusually big brain relative to its own body weight. So in terms of brain, as a size, we have other animals that are bigger than us, for example, dolphins or elephants. But relative to our body weight, this is the biggest brain we are aware of. That's the biggest thing, is not the, the important thing, but it's part of the thing. The fact that we are big in terms of brain is part of the capability to generate new things, but this is not the only thing, and we'll talk about this in a second, what makes us so unique? Why is our brain so unique? relative to other brains of the chimpanzee, for example, that we generate all the time new things. Just to tell you that our brain in the last 100,000 years genetically have not changed, so we are the same genome like the, the early Homo sapiens 100,000 years ago. So we as a phenomena, a very young phenomena, 100,000 years old, and all this yellow, yellow part, so these are years, all this yellow part is the, what we call the cultural evolution. This is a period where there is no genetic change in the human sapiens, but still we generate completely new things constantly. For example, written language in the last 5,000 years. So language and math is a new phenomena of this old brain, old in terms of 100,000 years old. So we are constantly generating new things, like mathematics, science, uh, computers, and we are also trying to understand our own brain. So this is an amazing phenomena that the brain itself is generating tools to understanding itself, not only understanding, but changing itself, not only itself, but its own genome. It's a very unusual phenomena. We don't know of any other brain who is doing it. Uh, just to tell you not to be worried, but your brain is becoming less weight, less heavy with time, not now, when you listen, to, when you hear the talk, but, but, but on average, along the years, you can see that the brain was on average about 0.5 kilograms, it's less now. We don't completely understand why the human brain is becoming shrinked. Doesn't matter, because you see, we do amazing things with the shrinked brain. But that's, that's, a, fact, that's a fact that you could discuss in another, in another session, not today what is called the structural plasticity of the brain. Structural, the change in the anatomy of the brain with time. I'm not going to talk about this, just to let you know, your brain is not going to change, but the next generation will have a, a little shrinked brain relative to you. So this brain is doing amazing things, really. Absolutely shocking. All these things that we can do, you know, Einstein and others, thoughts, creativity, imagination, art, mathematics, science. But on the other hand, this brain is doing other things that I want to discuss in a second. The, this brain of yours, like all mammals, have a unique thing, and a unique patent. We can say like an inventful building block. It's called the cortical column. So below your skull, in the cortex, this, this convoluted sheath of neurons have this kind of blocks, building blocks, repeatedly building blocks. Each one is about a cubic millimeter. This is called the cortical column. This is an invention of the mammals. 
We don't know of this structure before the mammalians. This is a new structure. We have it, mouse have it, monkeys have it, cats have it. Lower animals do not have it. And this is the first focus of the modern research in many ways, not only, of course, because there are other parts of the brain, as Hagai will mention later, but the cortex is something very unusual for, 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 for the mammalians. So we are trying to understand this column. We know today to simulate in the computer this column. So this is what happens in a millimeter cubic in your brain. A cubic millimeter in your brain looks like this. About four kilometers of wires, about billion, 10 to the power of nine connections. This is the fundamental building block of this relatively new region, the neocortex. So now you are diving into a cubic millimeter in your brain. We have to understand all this in order to, to, to change the brain, to manipulate the brain in diseases and so forth. So the diseases is, of course, the main issue because as we get older, as we expand life, uh, we, we, we see more and more of these terrible uh, diseases. We know today of, a, I mean by names, we know today about 560 diseases are named, neurological diseases are named. And this is, of course, a huge suffering to the human being. I'm sure everybody or every one of you know uh, that, that there are these diseases. He knows it from family or friends and so forth. And, and it's certain that it's clear that if we are going to expand life, and we do, the expectancy is that about the end of 21st century, we will live on average more than 100 years on average. This means that all these amazing, terrible diseases will come up and we really need to, to solve it as brain researchers. We cannot allow ourselves to have a, a, a community with half people uh, suffering from diseases like that. So, so, so that's, that's the main issue, that's the main challenge, that's the main force that we are all putting in brain research towards the 21st century. We, we, can, we can talk about two aspects, the brain repair, repairing the diseased brain, you will hear about that today but also to augment the brain capabilities. Because one thing, as I showed you before, is that with this same brain, we are changing all the time, constantly. For example, after this talk, you are certainly not going to have the same brain as you came in, if you will remember anything that I was just saying, or anybody else. So that means that physically your brain has changed. So this is a fantastic capability to change constantly with the interaction in the environment with new challenges like GPS, with new challenges like iPhones and computers. And the challenges are going to become amazingly intense, really intense. We will have to adapt to all this if we want to, to go on living in this adapting and changing world. And this is called basically the brain augmentation. We are trying to find ways to enable the brain to be able to prepare itself, to be ready to the changes that we, our brain itself, is, is causing. The new building, the new GPS, the new telemetric communication, and so forth. So this is, this is the whole issue of brain augmentation. How do I intervene with the brain? Either by education, or by medication, or by electrical stimulation. How do I intervene with the brain to enable it, or do I want to intervene with the brain? How do I interact with the brain from the outside? to enable it to expose, to express, to be able to challenge itself with the new things that are coming. So this OG-COG era, augmenting cognition, OG-COG era, is the era that we are in, in terms of brain sciences. It will impact every one of you. And so that's the session today. It will discuss the issue of augmenting cognition, both in disease, but also in health. I just want to say that we are optimistic that we can learn the brain, understand the brain deep enough in order to be able to, uh, to repair it when it seeks, but also enable to use what we know, what we've learned about this, and, and, and make it more adaptable, more plastic, more capable of changing. And this is par partly because of these new technologies. I'm not going to go into details. For example, the Brainbow technology. It's a new technology that enables us to look at the brain in a colorful way, so the brain is not going to be any more black and white or gray matter. It's a colorful matter today. We can generate mouse, in this case, mice that are colorful. It's called the Brainbow technology. And this enables us to study the brain in a much, much better anatomically and also physiologically way. And this is a reflection of what I just said. These new technologies is reflected by many, many new brain centers in New York, in Jerusalem, now built by Norman Foster, in, in Lisbon, 
the Champollion Center in London, and so forth. There is now 10 new buildings being built today for brain research in a very different brain research that we used to. It looks like this. A center of brain research today will not be anymore a biological center. It will be an integrative center with physicists, computer scientists, engineers sitting in one center, interacting together to really solve the issue of brain research in general, but augmenting cognition in particular.